And now, please give a warm welcome to the Newport Jazz Choir, directed by Nancy Fisher. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Just a
Thank you to the Newport Jazz Choir. And now, a few words from Bellevue Schools Foundation Executive Director Roxanne Crone Shepherd and Bellevue School District Superintendent Dr. Tim Mills. I am absolutely delighted to be able to welcome all of you to the 25th anniversary Spring for Schools Luncheon and very pleased and proud that it is my fourth of these events as the executive director. But I'm also really excited about the fact that today welcoming, helping me welcome you is our new superintendent of the Bellevue Public Schools, Dr. Tim Mills. Thank you, Roxanne. I also want to extend my welcome to you and also say that uh, it is really a great honor to be here today. You know, we have a great school district and I think everybody here understands that there is this a long legacy of, of this school district. And so as I've been here this past year, I've really been trying to understand uh, why this district is as strong as it is. And there are a lot of variables, but I want to just mention one today. And it's about community. I have never seen a community that rallies around and supports the schools the way we do in Bellevue. We have high expectations for our schools, but I will also say that with that expectation, our community comes out and supports the schools. And the leader in that support is the Bellevue Schools Foundation. I'm amazed at the dedication of the board of directors for the Bellevue Schools Foundation, the leadership that Roxanne provides, and the hard work of her staff and to thank all of you because what you do in support of this school district makes a difference in the lives of each and every one of our kids. So it's great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us today. I do hope you have noticed the names and logos of our many sponsors. They've been on the screens and they're in your printed programs. I'd like to draw your attention to five of the top sponsors for today's event. We have the Boeing Company, Microsoft, Republic Services, Spee West, and Union Bank as valedictorians. And then this year we are particularly pleased and proud, as you can see on your walls here, that our presenting sponsor is the Bellevue Collection and the Kemper Freeman family. And when, yay, exactly. <laughs> and when that decision was made to be our lead sponsor with a gift of $25,000, we were specifically told that it is because we have a wonderful new superintendent and it was in honor of Tim's joining us and also our 25th anniversary year. So sponsors are extremely important in our ability to have a successful event, which of course immediately translates into doing amazing things for the kids in our schools. One of the things we're very proud of is that every one of the PTSAs representing our schools has joined us today as a sponsor of our event. This is representative of an amazing collaboration and we are so grateful and proud to be able to work directly with our friends at the individual schools. It's a great joy, thank you. We would now, um, I also want to take a moment to draw attention to the incredible hard work and the amazing people who pulled today's event together and they are also listed in your program. So please help me thank all the volunteers who brought all of this together. And in addition to our business sponsors, we're very pleased and proud at the number of individuals and families who have joined us as lead donors. Our angels have created a pool to match every one of the $1,000 gifts that are made here today. And our head of the class donors have stepped up with their leadership and leading by example. So please help me thank all of these very generous and, and visionary people. Evidence of collaboration exists across the district, and I truly believe that it is this spirit of collaboration and the willingness to work together that results in such amazing results for our young people. 
Tim and I would like to welcome to the stage my good friend Michelle Miller, who represents the president of the Bellevue Education Association, representing our teachers for an important announcement. As I came to the district last summer, one of my top priorities was really to work to begin to build a very strong, positive, and lasting relationship with all of our district employees because they're so critical in our mission for children. And of course, our largest group of employees are our teachers. And last fall, I asked Michelle if she and her team would be willing to try something different for bargaining, a different approach to bargaining. And we did, uh, do some very intensive training in November with administrators and uh, leaders from our BEA association. And we came together and decided that after the training, indeed, that's how we would go about our, our negotiations this year. And I'm excited to be here with Michelle to recognize her leadership, but also to share with our community that for the first time that anybody can remember since maybe the 80s, our school district and our teachers association has reached a tentative agreement for a three-year contract before the end of the school year. So when our folks leave, thank you, that, that is uh, an impressive amount of work that went into this, but the leadership that Michelle provided, the support of our administrators, and the support of our board of directors really made this all happen. So I'm thrilled to be a superintendent that can come into a district and to be a part of such a great district, the community support, the work of our teachers, and the work of all of our employees. So in, enjoy the rest of the program. It's really an honor to be here. Thank you so much for your support. That all right? Please welcome semi-time Emmy Award winner, Chief Weathercaster for Como TV, and program host, Steve Poole. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, before I get started, I have to tell you something. Because I can see this look on your face, and when I speak in public, I can tell it. I know exactly what you're thinking, especially since it's Friday and the weekend is just around the corner. You're thinking, what's the weather going to do? Well, since that's not my primary purpose for being here, I will tell you, but I'm going to reserve that for the end of the program, so you'll have to, as they say, stick around. But when I do tell you, I have a feeling you're not going to be surprised. So let's get started. First of all, welcome to Spring for Schools. Isn't this fabulous? Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. Now, I'm sure that many of you are aware of how well Bellevue School District is regarded on a national scale. All of these reports and these magazines that keep looking at Bellevue, and they, they, they speak quite highly of what we have here. But that also poses a challenge. Here's the way I see it. If you rest on your laurels, that's the best way to lose your laurels. We still have tremendous challenges ahead, and we have tremendous opportunities as well. So first of all, let me tell you what we're going to talk about today. First of all, we're going to inform you about the programs that are supported by the foundation. So you really get a feel of what goes on and how it impacts the kids. And then we're also going to inspire you. You're going to meet some of the kids who've been affected by the programs that are put on by the foundation. And I think you'll find them to be wonderful, precocious, and intelligent kids. All right? So let's get things started. First of all, I want to, I, I really think this is important, so let's have another round of applause, can we, for uh, the Bellevue School District and the Teachers Association for pulling that together and getting that out of the way. That is just fantastic. <laughs> They've done just a terrific job on that. All right, so before we get into the meat of our program, we have some civic leaders here, and I'd like to introduce them, but here's what I want you to do. Can you please hold your applause, and we'll go through each one of them. Would you please stand when I, uh, when I say your name, and then we'll have applause for everybody. All right, here's who we have here today. First of all, Washington State Senators Michael Baumgartner and Steve Letzow. 
We also have Washington State Representatives Cyrus Habib and Marcy Maxwell. King County Council Members Reagan Dunn and Jane Haig. The Bellevue Mayor Conrad Lee is here. John Chelmanak, the Bellevue City Council Member, and his colleagues Jennifer Robinson, Kevin Wallace, and John Stokes. And from the Bellevue School District Board, we have Christine Chu, Chris Marks, Paul Mills, and Mike Murphy. And we also have with us, and a special vote of thanks, to Steve Sarkozy for 12 years of fabulous service as a city manager here in Bellevue. Thank you all for being here. All right, so let's get started. Got something really cool for you right off the top here. Jesse Willie Wilson is chair and president and CEO of the Bellevue-based Dreambox Learning. This year, Bellevue Schools Foundation is funding licenses to give every elementary student across the district access to this incredible adaptive math program, both at home and at school. This is some really neat stuff. Would you please welcome Jesse Woolley Wilson. Good afternoon. I am delighted to be here and to be a part of this community. I moved here a couple years ago from Wilmington, Delaware, where I grew up. I'm one of seven children. Uh, my father came to this country from Haiti really equipped with his education, his family, and he would say his faith. So education has been a big focus of my whole family for a long time. And I've been in the education technology business for about 20 years now. Fundamentally at Dreambox, we believe that every child deserves a chance to have an excellent education, regardless of zip code, and regardless of what language is spoken in the home. We honor teachers and we want to support teaching and learning. In fact, we ask teachers to partner with, with software engineers to develop Dreambox Learning. So it's really a program that was delivered, developed by teachers for teachers. Dreambox Learning is an adaptive learning program that basically tries to provide a teaching assistant for every child through the use of technology. We combine a robust curriculum, gaming elements, although we're not a gaming company, and then a pioneering technology called intelligent adaptive learning. How many of us, how many of us have, act have used these reference engine technologies? How many of you have bought something on Amazon that you never thought you'd buy, or ordered a movie from Netflix that you never heard about? Why? Because these are technologies that get to know us as we use it. And at Dreambox, we have brought that kind of innovation to learning. So in Dreambox, the technology learns the learner as the learner learns. So why are we here? Why am I here? I'm joined by teachers from Dreambox here and some colleagues. We're here because of innovation in Bellevue schools. We're, we're, we're here because of innovation by parents. There was a PTA lead program called Academic Challenge where we wanted to, in Bellevue, reward students for going above and beyond. The math director at Bellevue School saw this and saw the engagement of children in this PTA le lead program and piloted Dreambox in nine schools. They wanted to make sure they could differentiate instruction and actually help to develop young minds, young mathematicians. Finally, this is where the foundation comes in. The foundation saw this, and they sponsored a pilot last spring in nine schools for K through three. When they saw the dramatic impact, the district saw it and brought it to all schools, K through three in, in Bellevue schools. So why, what's special about this? I go around the country, we're in 48 states and the District of Columbia. I go all around the country, and there are a lot of communities that have no idea what to do and how to partner, and I talk about Bellevue, and I talk about the Bellevue Schools Foundation, because I believe it's a national model that should be emulated. 
We started small, we built on success, and now it's in district. So let me tell you some fun facts about Bellevue. There are 5,000 kids on Dreambox Learning in Bellevue schools. They spent over 7,000 hours, 7,000 hours learning math, math and liking it. And the most important part, they've mastered 42,000 lessons. 42,000 lessons, K through three, in Bellevue schools. That's because of the Bellevue Schools Foundation and the partnership with Bellevue, uh, with the Bellevue District. So I think we should pause and celebrate that. 42,000 lessons in Bellevue. So you're gonna be inspired by a lot of people who are coming up, so I'm gonna leave you with this. I think that the first step to unlocking human potential is by first unlocking a child's learning potential. And we are very proud to be working in partnership with the Bellevue School District and the Bellevue Schools Foundation to, in to incubate innovation in learning. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Now, let's, let's take this to another level. Uh, you know, one of the things that you can do to really get a feel for how these programs work is if you get a chance, go out and see some of these programs actually in operation in the schools. I actually had a chance to do that this week. There's a, a program that's set up at the school district headquarters, and it's basically a little barista stand where the kids come in and, and they make coffee, and it's part of a transitional program. What they do is this is a place for the kids to learn about money and about business and about responsibility and showing up on time. And they have an incredible rate of kids who come out of this program and go on and get a job. I mean, it's well into the 90 percentile. And besides that, the coffee is really good. So if you get a chance, stop by. I mean, it's one of those interesting programs. Wow. It's one of those interesting programs. And let me tell you this, and this is, this is the most important part of it. That program cost $1,000. That's it. And it's doing all that great work. That's what the foundation is all about. So now we want to show you a little bit more. We've got a video for you that's going to take you behind the scenes and what goes on in the school district and all of the programs that the foundation has in place. Recall it, a day in the life. the wet felting project is it's applying all the concepts and skills from art class that they cover in addition to having them take their information and things that they've learned in their science curriculum and kind of combine the two and apply them together. What about putting in a I could be dumb right now. And that's a science question. What I like about working here is I like meeting the people here and seeing all the different things that people do and working with my peers. As of now, we're almost at 100% employment from everyone graduating, which is really amazing. Dreambox has been great around the school this year. It allows and helps kids move along at their own pace. I can learn new stuff independently and you can do it a fun way. The Bellevue Schools Foundation has been instrumental in our school in the things that we do with kids to really enrich their school's experience and take school beyond textbooks. We're building these balsa wood bridges with wood and glue. When you test it, if it breaks, you can see why it broke, and then you can change it next time for a better design. 
probably the most important way that we support our children every day is through trying to ensure that they have some of the best teachers. And we're very proud of the fact that we've uh, put a lot of money into increasing the numbers of them who are nationally board certified because we know that that makes a difference. It gets to really the important things, the great learning. I feel like after national board certification, I worked smarter. We're really thankful that the Bellevue Schools Foundation for the past two years has funded a position called the Positive Behavior Intervention Specialist. We are reducing the amount of disciplinary concerns and disciplinary issues that we have in our schools because we're being proactive. Great job! The Bellevue Schools Foundation has provided financial support so that every student can have an instrument to learn and to play and to be exposed to the arts through band and orchestra. We're so thankful that the Bellevue Schools Foundation funds aids to be in the classrooms and to support instruction. Senor Eduardo, we really like him because he helps us with, with work. One, two, three. So to know that community members make donations so that those things can happen at our school and can continue to happen is really motivating and inspiring for teachers who are working hard every day. AVID is more than just a tutoring program, which is I think how many people conceive of it. It's a, a systematic approach to how do we learn. At Highland, we really, we know that if kids feel success outside of the classroom, that can translate to success in the classroom. So here's Satellite Club, where it brings students with like interests together to expand on their passions. And um, it's really something we couldn't provide without some extra support and funding. I love hands-on learning because it actually helps uh, implement ideas and um, like skills into your head so it jams into your head and you know what to do. It used to be there's so much information you have to get to the kids we were just talking at them the whole time. Now they log into their Naviance account and they get a really interact and they kind of take ownership. Naviance it's very customizable. There's a bunch of different types of uh, information you can put in, like how big the college is, how much you can afford to pay for it, and how much financial aid they give. You can put your resume on there, your to-do plan. Another thing is goals. So the great thing is goals, you have it down somewhere. It's not just in your head. The investment that we're making this year and in the coming years in this College and Career Next Steps program provides the resources in terms of training to the counselors, this fabulous program called Naviance, college boot camps to really fill that gap. When students have the opportunity to educate themselves and to further their own personal growth and development, you create such robust members of their own community. So every time you're writing for, co for college essays, you're showing, showing, showing. The Bellevue Schools Foundation is very much a product of and reflective of the nature and the character and the personality of the city of Bellevue and its residents. Supporting students because today they are our young people who need us. And it doesn't matter if they're from the low income households or the highest income, they can be challenged or brilliant, they need us today and our donors and our programs are there for them. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if, any of the, if this happens to you sometimes. Uh, uh, my kids, when they come home, occasionally they'll tell me something that they, they got in school that day, and I will just marvel at it and think to myself, there is no way that I would have known that when I was that age. Our kids are doing so much more, and, and we need it. I mean, our country needs it, the world needs it, and it's just fantastic to see. Now, I have to tell you, 
None of these things that you've seen so far today, they don't happen without the Bellevue Schools Foundation. Now let me tell you what's coming next. There's more to come on the College and Career Initiative for middle and high school students, that's coming. We also are expanding targeted intervention programs for middle school students based on current successes. And we're continuing to invest in STEM. As you know, that's science, technology, engineering, and math. And this is happening in the elementary schools all over the district. How quickly we can deploy our next three steps depends on you. Now, I want you to meet a very interesting and precocious young man who's got quite a story to tell you, but I think it illustrates so much about how we can change the lives of children with the actions that we take today. Would you please welcome Big Picture School sophomore Jesus Cruz. I, um, well, uh, Marianne told me it was going to be pretty big, but I didn't know it was going to be <laughs> this big. So, um, God help me, man. All right. Um, good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Jesus Cruz, and first of all, I want to thank all you guys for coming here today, especially my mom and dad over at table three. <laughs> All right, so I'm a 10th grader at Bellevue Big Picture School, which opened up in 2011. By 2014, it will actually be a school that serves 6th through 12th grade, just so you guys know. Uh, a little history about me. I was born in California to Mexican immigrant parents. I have three other siblings, all who attend the Bellevue School District. One of them, my older sister, who will graduate from Interlake High School this year and attend Central Washington University this upcoming fall, making her the very first person in our family to attend college. I started Bellevue School District in sixth grade at Highland Middle School. Then I got moved to Robinswood Middle School for seventh grade. Then I jumped over to Taiyi Middle School for eighth grade. I, uh, I finally settled at Big Picture my ninth grade year where, I don't know if you guys know, but Students learn through their interests and through internships. Uh, when I got to Big Picture, I thought an internship would be something like me going to McDonald's, helping out, and getting discounts. <laughs> but apparently not. Big Picture had something big planned for me, something that would change me, and something that would inspire me. My first real internship was at Newport Heights Elementary School in a center program with special ed kids. Throughout this internship, I started feeling a connection with the kids. I started caring for them, and I, I wanted to impact and be a role model for them, and it was a little weird, but I cared for them. Um, sometimes, when they wouldn't get what I was trying to teach them, I would get frustrated at myself. Myself was always the first person that I would get frustrated and mad at. And then I got frustrated at them. But then one day, I realized that it was actually part of their nature, you know? And it, it wasn't part of my nature. And that's kind of when life slapped me in the face, you know? Because it wasn't part of my nature, yet I was going to my own classes, to my own teachers in my own school, and doing the exact same things. I was making my teachers cry. When I finally understood what it was like to be a teacher and to be a leader, I changed. I completely changed. And it was really all thanks to those little kids at my internship. Thanks to them, I realized all the frustration I was putting all my teachers through. And I hated the thought that I was the one causing it. So I changed. And uh, after all my emotional and uh, personal transformation at Newport Heights, I continued on with the special ed path. And now this year, I have an internship at Highland Middle School. Um, there at Highland, I had a meeting with the same principal from sixth grade, with uh, the counselor there and my mentor. And uh, let me just tell you, having that meeting was the best redemption 
anyone could have asked for. It was kind of like my chance to slap life back in the face. In the, meeting, in the middle of the meeting, I realized that I was the one leading that meeting, and I was the one they were taking notes on, and they were listening to me. You know, big picture internships helped change me in such a positive way, and many doors began opening. This past February, I was actually given the opportunity to attend the Latino Educational Achievement Project, or LEAP Conference. The Bellevue Schools Foundation funded for 15 students from Bellevue School District to attend. At the conference, I heard many inspirational stories and met so many people. I realized being Latino isn't something to be embarrassed about, and it isn't something that we should be looked down upon. It's something that should make us work harder and strive for bigger things. We can't let our race stop us from we can't let our race stop us from achieving what we can or we want to be. Our group of 15 Latinos went to the LEAP conference and presented all of you well. We went there and we made our voices be heard. We let people know who we were. And so now people at LEAP expect Bellevue schools to return every single year with more and more kids. Big picture and the internships were my salvation and they will be the salvation of other kids like me. There's a self-fulfilling prophecy for Latinos. We are troublemakers, we do bad in school, and we're drop apps. But ladies and gentlemen, today let me tell you that I refuse to fulfill that prophecy. I, I am a minority. And I do have different ways of learning. But today, I can stand up here and tell you guys with pride in my voice and confidence in myself that I will graduate high school and I will attend a four-year university and I will succeed in life like it's nobody's business. <laughs> but it is someone's business. It's, uh, it's my business, it's your business, and it's the Bellevue Schools Foundation business. It's Bellevue School Foundation made it possible for internships, for Big Picture's first internship year. Um, it also helped the LEAP conference. It had helped 15 of us to attend and change. It's thanks to you all that I can stand up here today and tell you how far I've come. I really, I can't wait till that one day where I can sit where you're all sitting and give back to the next group of kids after me. So, thank you. Wow. Yeah, that was that good, don't you think? Come on. That was wonderful. Oh my goodness. You remember what I was saying about, I never did that. I do this for a living and I couldn't do that as a sophomore. Are you kidding me? That is stunning. God bless you, young man. You're gonna do just fine. And now would you please welcome Jacqueline Estefan, who's the principal of Stevenson Elementary. I'm so inspired by Jesus, and I'm feeling like, why am I following him? He's amazing. But I was asked here today to tell you my story, and it's not an easy story to tell, especially in front of 1,200 people. But today, the principal at Stevenson is here because good people believed in me when I needed it the most. And I believe in your power to fuel the transformational work of the Bellevue Schools Foundation. When I was five years old, my Lebanese father was killed in a car accident in Beirut where we were living. And my mom had lived in Beirut for 12 years with him. And as a widow, she came back to the United States uh, with my twin brother, my eight-year-old brother, and myself. 
We moved in with relatives, and I enrolled at Cottage Lake Elementary in the North Shore School District. Speaking Arabic, we were the only English language learners in that school. I had a fantastic elementary school education, wonderful, caring teachers, and an emphasis on reading, which opened my whole world. And I was able to attend dance classes, which gave me joy. Reading and dance were my escapes as my home life became an unsafe environment where my mom could not protect me. During these years, I made a friend named Dana Chapman, and being at Dana's house was like a dream. Mrs. Chapman made me snacks, and she cooked dinner for us. I thought I was in a fairy tale. Mrs. Chapman drove me to dance classes and to my recitals, and she braided my hair, and she made sure that I had the dance uniforms I needed just like the other girls. And I'm eternally grateful to this mom who gave me a sense of security and joy. At the same time, my sixth grade teacher, Mr. John Butts, was the consistency and stability that I needed as my home life became increasingly abusive. Only recently did I realize that he was in his first year of teaching while I was in his class. He was nurturing, and despite his awareness of CPS's involvement with my family, Mr. Butts maintained high expectations for my learning and treated me with dignity. By the end of my sixth grade year, CPS removed me from my family and placed me in a series of temporary group homes for 12 through 18-year-old boys and girls. There, I experienced more trauma and was constantly frightened, and I was separated from my twin brother and my older brother. Four months later, my home life stabilized, and I was assigned to a caring foster home in Renton. I was now at seventh grade at Nelson Middle School. My energetic and compassionate teacher, Miss Jean Santa Maria, became my refuge. I went to her classroom most days, if not every day, after school, and I stayed as long as I could. And she never turned me away. Her words still echo in my mind. I believe in you, and you can do this. Miss Carmela Delino was my middle school counselor. At that time, I was quite a mess. But she invested in me and met with me regularly and never stopped believing in my abilities. Being a foster care kid in school is miserable. Um, you're different. You have a different last name. You look different from your guardians. You're on free lunch, and everyone knows it. And you have a special hatred for family heritage projects. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Though I struggled to adjust to being a foster care kid, I wanted to be smart and I wanted to be successful in my classes. And I give tribute to my elementary school teachers and particularly Mr. Butts as my passion for great literature was solid. As I made my way through Lindbergh High School, two relentless adults saw potential in me that I didn't know I had. Career counselor, Mrs. Donna Fetch, and my English teacher, Mr. Jeff Lowell. Mrs. Fetch single-handedly made my going to a four-year college her mission. She handed me every scholarship possible, wrote nominations and letter of recommendations for me. And as it turns out, there is an unintended benefit to spending most of your life avoiding your home. I had joined every club and activity possible, which put me in a good position for college. Mr. Lowell was not about to let me leave Lindbergh High School until I could write a decent essay. I wrote and rewrote essays at his insistence. By the end of my senior year, I had applied for 60 scholarships and I had received $40,000 in aid. I was accepted to Seattle Pacific University with an additional financial package. And thanks to Mr. Lowell, I could write a decent college essay. As I approached college graduation, I knew that I wanted to give back. After receiving my degree, I joined an AmeriCorps program in the Highline School District. I was matched with Latrice, a precious first grade girl. In that year, I experienced the magic of teaching a child to read, and I saw the transformation of a child who had the power of literacy. This girl, in this year, inspired me to teach. 
Next, I joined Teach for America. I trained in New York public schools and was placed in South Central LA. Here, I simultaneously, simultaneously taught and received my master's degree. In 2004, I accepted a job here in Bellevue. I knew I wanted to become a principal, and I was inspired by this forward-thinking district. Right now, as principal of Stevenson, I am exactly where I want to be. Nearly 50% of my students are on free and reduced lunch, with half of them living below the federal poverty line. But here is what I know. This district believes no child should fall through the cracks. The quality of instruction is critical in making a difference in the child's educational life. The classroom instruction I received at Cottage Lake Elementary is what gave me a chance to succeed. And now, my Stevenson students are receiving that same chance for success. We have high high quality and motivated teachers. We have kindergarten aides supporting literacy, and we're implementing Dreambox, which you've heard about. Much of our power to transform is made possible through the innovative and targeted support from the Bellevue Schools Foundation. In other words, from all of you. As principal, I can champion for all kids at Stevenson, and I am proof of the power of investing in one child. I can impact 500 kids. You have the chance to be the champion for the 18,000 kids in our school through this foundation. We need the whole community to fuel these powerful innovations showing, showing such tremendous results. The time is now, today. Preparing for this day sent me back across my life. The names and faces of people who offered me opportunities and hope filled my heart once again. I knew this was my chance to reach back in my own history and pay tribute. With the help of the Bellevue Schools Foundation, I found six special people who I gratefully consider my childhood heroes. Today, they do me a great honor by allowing me to recognize them publicly. Thank you from a hurting child who was given a chance to heal and grow because you embraced me. Please join me in giving public tribute to Janet Chapman, John Butts, Jean Santa Maria Carwin, Carmela Delino, Jeff Lowell, and Donna Fetch. I wouldn't be here without your love. Why do I even try? <laughs> I can barely keep it together. I'm, I'm Bill Pollard, and I'm humbled to be on the same stage as the people who have been on it before. I'm the incoming president of the trustees of the Bellevue Schools Foundation, and more importantly, I'm a, a proud resident of this community. And, uh, you know, leave it to these two, Jesus and Jacqueline, to, to essentially capture the entire essence of what all this is about in a very short period of time. Jesus sat there and said, it's my business to smash stereotypes about Latino people. It's my business to succeed and prosper and do things that others haven't been able to do in my family. And it's in my business to give it back to the kids 
He's not even out of his schools, and he's giving it back to the kids already. It's a business to Jesus. And Jacqueline just defined, better than anyone could ever do, what a community is. Those six amazing people essentially gave her the safety net, the support, the care, the love that allowed her to succeed and be the woman she is today. And what does she do? But she comes back and gives it right back to 500 kids. And, and she will do it the rest of her life. We are in the business of community. That's what it's about today. I mean, I, screw the speech. That is, that is, <laughs> that is what it's about. We are in the business of being a community, and it's a very exciting community to be a part of, and I'm very proud to be one small part of it. So we have a challenge today, as you would not, I'm not surprised, you're not surprised, but we are 25% short of the minimum goal that we have to come up with to pay for the programs for next year. It's not that the, we've, we haven't made as much money, we've raised as much money as we always have. So programs have gotten more expensive, and you got a glimpse of what those programs are. So here's three important numbers to consider. $312.50, $625, $1,250. Those three numbers are important because I went back and I looked over the last 10 years, and over 75% of the people in this room will give 250, 500, or 1,000. If you add 25% to each one of those three, Pardon my math, 312 and 50 cents, 625, 1250. So first of all, the metrics you used for the last 10 years can no longer be here. Because if we don't at least make, at least make the 25%, then those programs do not show up next year and those kids do not have it. And that is intolerable, I'm sure, for everyone in this room. Now, table captains, you got a yellow envelope. Please pass it out and let me share with you an interesting, interesting thing that has occurred. So we sit there at the foundation and we get presented these opportunities to invest in these kids. What I just talked about will get us to the bare minimum of what we have done and will continue to do. It will not get us one step further. There is an element of people in this room who can give thousands of dollars more than a thousand and for, remember there is no more thousand it's now 1250 <laughs> but there is an element there's a group of us that know in their heart in their mind and they have this passion that they could write a two thousand dollar check they could write a three thousand dollar check we have to do it if we don't do it today if we don't do it right now we don't get that stuff those kids, 18,245 kids, are enrolled in this district. We have the most amazing teachers. This district has proven to us every single time we give them a dollar, we give them an ounce, an ounce of resources, they make a gallon of success for us. But folks, we've got to do it. We've got to just buck up. We've got to write the check. It has to happen right now. This is 18,000 kids that literally tomorrow their lives change, or not. So I'm sorry, I don't mean to get a little emotional about this, but you see the energy and the effort and, the, and what goes in, what the teachers are doing, what the superintendent is doing, what this foundation is doing. And, and it's staggering. I mean, these, these kids' lives are better, better, better lives because of it. So some logistics. Um, oh, one thing I should point out to you. This is what happens when you throw your speech away. <laughs> First of all, we have that amazing group that every year steps and does the, at, does the angel matching. So every 1,250, remember there is no more 1,000, every 1,250 is now doubled. And if you have a corporate match, you now triple. So anyone who's even in the realm of that should be remembering that and taking advantage of that. The other thing is we had an unprecedented amount of sponsorship this year. And what I find particularly interesting about that is, guess who these sponsors are? These sponsors are Boeing, Microsoft, and then a small technology company called Dreambox. 
or, an arch or a uh, law firm in Bellevue that's been around, Han uh, Hanson Baker Drumheller. I mean, these, these are people, King County Council donated money. I mean, the entire community is coming together as a community doing what we have to do. And if we, all we have to do is step up a little bit and we are gonna have a miracle. We're gonna have an extraordinary opportunity on our hands. So again, sorry, logistics. Fill out your forms. Please don't forget to put your credit card number appropriately. Please don't forget to put your expiration date. And more importantly is you've already filled out the form. You're tired of me talking to you. You want me to get the hell off the stage. <laughs> and you said, if, if I just had, I'll just another hundred bucks. I'll just throw another hundred bucks. Write a note, write a sticky, write it on your envelope. Write it, I don't care where you write it. I owe you a hundred bucks, Bill. Stick it in the envelope. We will find you. We will track you down. <laughs> I will come to your home. Does not matter. We take boats. We take cars. We will take anything that will help these children be what they can be. And so on behalf of the 18,245 kids that are dependent on what we do today, on behalf of the teachers that stepped up with Michelle's leadership and struck a deal with our district, on behalf of our new superintendent who has done extraordinary things in a short period of time, thank you so much for your support. All right, thank you very much. Uh, as you noticed when you came in here, we have the Newport Jazz Choir with us, and they are back. Could you please give them your undivided attention for some more fun?
That's great. I felt like I was back in Missouri in the church, you know? Yeah. All the old ladies doing this, you know? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I love that stuff. All right. We're almost done here. First of all, I want to get our table captains to stand. Could you please stand and be recognized? Our table captains. Great job. Thank you. Okay, one more item. Uh, there are some boxes uh, outside the door here. Uh, if you have any like spare change or extra bucks there, uh, just drop them in there. The dollars will support music programs in the Bellevue schools, including this choir uh, that we just heard. So, thank you for being here. One last thing, as promised. Mostly cloudy, chance of showers, Highs around 60 degrees. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've said that. All right. God bless you for being here. Thank you for all your support. I think we're going to keep the music going while you guys head out the door. What do you say? Have a great day. Thank you for being here. One more time.
Yeehaw! 